amazing. All right, there we go. Okay, so the power of content and how to market it. Um, I don't think I need to sell anybody here on the power of content of music or, or comedy or the arts or movies or anything like that. But just to fulfill all righteousness, I'll go through a, a little bit of research that I did online and all of this is available on the internet. All you need to do is make Google your friend. But just to get things started, uh, in 2011, the World Bank valued Nollywood as an industry worth over 500 million US dollars with over 1 million people in employment. According to CNBC Africa, the Nigerian music industry, which I'm a part of, produces well over 550 albums of different kinds of music annually, with the sales of Nigerian music having more than tripled in the last five years. Despite all of the problems and infrastructure and copyright issues that we have, uh, statistics show that global annual Nigerian live performances have reached around $105 million. And then mobile network operators, shout out to my MTN family in the building, generated $150 million from selling pop music ringtones and other music related services as far back as 2011. And so we're in 2016, so these stats are definitely going up. So I think it goes without saying that definitely, definitely, the power of content is obvious. You know, nobody needs to sell you on how powerful it is. Can we move this? Okay. So I want to start by speaking to the creators. Um, I know that there's a lot of artists, I've met some of you uh, coming in here today, so I know there's a lot of artists, uh, comedians, and just generally speaking, creative people, writers, bloggers in the building. But because I'm an artist, I want to focus a little bit on uh, the music side, and, and then you can take those lessons and interpolate them to other things. Um, first of all, over 90% of artists are undiscovered. Your desires as a content creator are not special. Your desires as a musician, as a comedian, as a writer, the desire to get people to listen to you, to appreciate your art, to gain followers, it's not special. There are literally millions of people who want to do exactly what you're doing. Most talented artists will not be successful. Unfortunately, it's sad, but it's true. It's a fact of life. Just because you are talented, doesn't mean you're going to be successful. Doesn't mean you're going to be able to sell it. The most, uh, the best singers are not the most successful. The best basketball players are not in the NBA. The best football players never make the super eagles. It's just the reality of life. So what does that tell us? It tells us that talent alone is not enough. I, I heard um, Shago Abaje speak recently and he said, talent is overrated. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I'm going to say that again because it's one of my favorite sayings. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So what are we saying? We're saying, yes, you have talent. Yes, you have content. But just being able to generate it alone is not enough. You need to put in the work. You need to be disciplined. You need to be focused. You need to do the research to make sure that you are giving your talent as much a chance to be successful. You are giving your content as much a chance to be seen or read or heard as possible. Otherwise, you will just be one of the millions of people who do not become successful. So now we move into creating content. I'm gonna move a little quickly because I know I only have 15 minutes and we have a session afterwards. So I'm gonna get right into it, creating content. As a content creator, you want to make something that is unique. And if you can take a look at the presentation, I spelled unique in an interesting way because it is important that whatever that you are, whatever it is that you're putting out is 100% as unique as you are as an individual. One of the things I like to say is when I'm speaking to a group of people is if you look at your hand, everybody look at your hand. Do you realize that of the billions of people in the world, nobody has your fingerprint? Of the billions of people in the world, even if you are twins, your DNA is separate from your twins' DNA. So when you are creating content, let the content that you make be as unique as you are as an individual. Let, let the content that you make stand apart from everything. If all you are doing is looking at... Listen, everybody has a video, everybody has a blog, everybody has content, everybody has art. 
So if all you're doing is looking at things that are out there that are successful and trying to mimic what is already there, you're just going to be lost in the shuffle. You're never going to stand apart. So you need to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, music is music, blogs, it's all the same thing, but you need to find a way to differentiate what you do from what everything else that is out there is. Um, think globally, but start locally, but start. So, I like to tell a story of when I started making music. This goes back before the days of social media, right? So, 10, 15, I don't want to date myself, but a long time ago, um, when I was in university, I decided that I wanted to make music. So I started recording. But at the time, I, I didn't have a record deal. I didn't have anybody to help me push my music out there. So what did we do? We finished recording the music, and we said, okay, in the very least, in the area of influence that I am, I should be able to affect that area. So we would print posters, put them on the side of the car, and drive around the neighborhood, and go to all the hair salons, and nail salons, and any place that had a lot of women as customers, and ask for the chance to sing to the customers. And I would sing for them, and I would sell my CDs at $5 a piece. And that's the first income that EME ever generated. Now the reason I tell that story is because you kind of have to start operating from where you are. These days, it's a lot easier because you have social media, you have the internet. So you don't have to necessarily drive door to door. But what you should be doing is that in that area of influence that you have, you have to get your stuff out there. You have to get your music out there. Yes, you want to be a superstar. Yes, you want to be on stage. But you have to start where you are and start affecting the people around you and start putting your content out. Take advantage of the internet. Take advantage of your, your social networks, your friends' social networks, and get your music out there. The other thing that I, I like to say is that you have to learn. Um, Steve Jobs said this, stay hungry, stay foolish. And if Steve Jobs can say that, at the height of his success, building one of the world's most successful companies, then who are you to say, oh, I know it all? You have to keep learning, you have to read. Um, I like, to, I like to, to bring up something. So when I, was, um, when I was in America and I started making music, I had songs, in my opinion, they were good songs, right? So I had Don't Break My Heart, I had My Regret, I had songs like that, which some of my fans till today still like. However, those songs didn't do as well in this market as I had hoped. Because I came and, you know, all I would get is, oh, the boy fits in, oh, in the try, in the try. You know, you know how Nigerians talk, oh yeah, you know, in the try, in the try, you know, he's doing all right, he's got a nice voice. But what happened was, the content I was making didn't connect to the market around me. So this brings me to my next point. You have to understand the market that you're in. You have to find a way. Listen, nobody's saying that you need to change who you are. If you change who you are, you're already fighting a losing battle. So you, you need to stay true to yourself. But you need to understand the market around you enough to say, maybe I need to take some things that these people already key into and incorporate that into some of the things that I do. So for me, what does that mean? I, I made R&B music and, you know, and it was decent quality music. But it, it, did, it was missing something. So what did I do? I started following and, and, and listening to people like Kobams. I started listening to LD. I started listening to people who were doing similar things to what I was doing, but had found a way to make it connect to the market that I was in. And so, um, Don't Break My Heart and My Regret and those kinds of songs, while they were good songs, they didn't have the same effect on this market as like show. Well, not most people. Can I have five minutes more? Five minutes, I promise I'm almost done. Two minutes. They said ten, ten. It's a democracy, democracy. Okay, most, most content creators, right, you think about, because by nature, artists are selfish people. You think about your emotions, your story, your art, and what you need to get that art out there, right? That's just, that's the way that we are. We're all wired that way. But for you to do this properly, you need to think outside of that box of me, 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 my art, my content, and say, okay, if I want to work with this brand, what can I bring to the table for them? What can they get out of it? What can I contribute to their bottom line? Because that's how companies think. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be the most fantastic artist in the world. If a company doesn't think that somehow, some way, working with you will affect their bottom line, they're not going to do business with you. That's it. It's not because you are fine, or your voice is nice, or your music is sweet. 
I work with Samsung. A lot of artists do endorsement deals and you know they come, they are the face on the billboard, they say show up for a commercial, you read the script, they say oh, perform at the show and then you go home. Ladies and gentlemen, I've done all of that. I've hosted Samsung shows, I've produced Samsung shows, I've directed Samsung commercials, I've written screenplays for their commercials, I've contributed to their advertising campaigns. So by the time they sit back and look at it, I've done so much that I'm now almost essentially a part of the staff. Like I'm, they, they, Samsung is a part of my life, I'm a part of their lives. And they, at the end of the year, they will not say, this is my fifth year with Samsung. Fifth year with Samsung, second year with MTN, shout out to MTN in the building. Uh, second or third year with Ciroc. And the reason is, I want to do more than just, oh, sponsor me or endorse me. I do this and I go home. I'm adding, I'm trying constantly trying to add value to these companies. I'm constantly trying to add value to the brands. I'm constantly trying to affect their bottom line. Okay, um, one minute. Be strategic in your alliances. I know MTN is a sponsor, so I'm sure they won't mind me saying this. Um, one of the reasons why I, I'd worked with telecoms brands before to, to very good results for the, for the companies. And then, you know, when it came time to, to do, it, do it again, and I, I, I kind of studied the industry and I said you know what I like MTN they're everywhere you go um, but also for, for people in the you can tell we can tell that you work for MTN it's your mom because you're the only one that shouted <laughs> um, but for people in the music business MTN what what other companies are doing now which is partnering with music and you know selling color tunes and all of that MTN tapped into it years ago so I'm sitting there looking at it like okay you know, all the companies are offering this amount of money up front, but if I work with MTN, they can push my content for me, they can do my color tunes. I can make so much more on the back end than I will get just off of an endorsement fee. So that's why I mean by being strategic. I could have renewed with other companies, I could have gone somewhere else, but I felt like these guys know what they're doing as far as content is concerned, and that's what I mean by being strategic. I'm just gonna skip through because TA is giving me the eye I promise I'm almost done. I promise I'm almost done. Um, let's see, you read it, okay. All right, um, dollars and cents, read everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I've heard it, it's saying once that, that says, if you want to hide something from a black person, put it inside a book, right? It's funny, but it's very sad. Read, it, it doesn't hurt to, to do research, to read online, to read books, and most especially, please, Read your contracts with a lawyer. I hear stories upon stories of artists who say, you know, this and this happened and they're, you know, but you didn't read the contract in the first place. You, you need to read what you're getting yourself into. When you can, cut out the middleman or at least reduce the percentage as much as possible. I would love to go into that some more, but I think- I In the panel, you can go into. All right, let's see. Uh, social media, can I touch on this for one minute? Uh, in the panel, you can touch on In the panel? Yes, uh, okay. in the panel. Um, and with these few points of wait, no, wait. <laughs> okay okay I'm just going to talk about one point on social media and then I'm going to close with that can you help me open it a little bit forget the slide this is the point I want to make about social media everybody knows social media is important that's where everybody is your fans your clients your followers brands are looking at your social media numbers to say if I'm going to endorse this guy how many people follow him on Instagram and on Twitter fine um, this is the only thing I'm going to say about social media. Would you follow you? Take a step back out of your own shoes and look at your social media activity. And think about it. If you didn't know yourself from anywhere and you came to your social media profile, would you follow yourself? Artists sometimes make the mistake that every day, oh, my new song is out. Oh, my new video. Here's the cover to my kidney. This, that. Oh, please retweet. Please repost. Please rebroadcast. And you come to their profile and that's all there is. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the way to build a social media. Social media has to be dynamic, it has to be interactive, it has to be engaging. It can't just always be about my music or my show or whatever. You have to find a way to engage with people, to connect with them. I see artists all the time. People, you know, fans are, are, are tweeting at them and all they are doing is just clicking retweet. Or worse yet, they're not even answering altogether. There's, that is no way to build a followership. You want to build a followership, answer somebody. Somebody says something, say thank you. Somebody cracks a joke, crack a joke back, post something funny, post something interesting. 
engage and that believe it or not by not selling all the time you're actually selling yourself more it's a different world people need to know who you are they need to feel like they're part of your story they want to know what makes you laugh they want to know what you're into and by all of that they will be into the music that you want to sell to them they will be into the content that you're trying to give to them you just have to be smarter about the way you present it and with these few points of mind after much ado i hope i've been able to convince you Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.